Boss Grid episode two, Controlling the Cycle. So today, Controlling Cycle, we're just gonna dive straight into the documentation. Trying to keep these under five minutes of video, so let's just get started. You'll find it at wasgrid.org slash docs. I'm jumped straight here to Controlling Cycle, and I'm not gonna read these verbatim, but it'll give you an idea of kind of what we're looking at. Um, Lost Grid has cycle, and what cycle is, is it is what determines where an element is in a row. And what that means is if we have maybe the designer has a four grid uh, layout, you might use this to represent a half, just because it might make more sense to you. It's two of the four uh, columns that the designer has. Well. The way Lost will then take that is it uses the numerator to control the cycle, basically which element is the last element. And the reason for that is if you have something that you want to take up half of a uh, width and you have four of those elements, you want it to have them to you know, actually lay out the way they should. And Cycle would take the numerator of one half and it would do that and put the, you know, remove the gutter on the last one and float it to the right. In fact, actually, we can take a look at that. Here's our example from the last episode, and let's just see what happens if we do that. So let's add two more of these. Um, there we go. Let's just add two more and see what happens. And oh, there we go. Goal. Perfect. One, two, three, four. And that is how a uh, lost grid handles that. So it'll add the cycle, and on this one, note 2n, margin right, float right. Voila! That cycle. But let's say we want to do something a little bit more complex. Let's do a couple things in our code. First thing we're going to do is I would like to add a, uh, a watch uh, function here so that we don't have to keep running gulp every time we want to. All right, so there we go. So we have a new watch task, and it basically is going to be watching our main and doing styles. That way, we don't have to come back here. We just do gulp watch, and whoop. Probably would help if I saved. Voila! Now we're going. All right. So now, whenever we go in here, so if I change that to three, yep. All right. We're watching, and we're going, and we're going. Perfect. Let's do something a little bit more complex. Let's say our designer wants us to add one more element in the middle here. So let's do that. I'm going to create a center element and let's label them for good measure. Left, center, and right. And then our designer wants the left and right ones to be one quarter and the center one to fill up one half of the grid. So let's take a look at what that would look like. One quarter and one half center and with that compiled doesn't look quite right what's happening here is the cycle is causing the issue now the cycle is extremely helpful but in instances like this where we have some uh, different uses of the columns it's going to be important for us to take advantage of the cycle in a different way the way we're going to fix this right here is we are going to Hello, if I can grab, there we go, perfect. We're going to simplify and just throw zero cycle on there. Now, if we read the docs, you can see this, the second um, element, um, sorry, second argument, um, newt, voila, simply pass the cycle param to the second argument, and that is going to change our cycle. And you can actually see a very similar example here in the docs where we do basically exactly what we're doing. Now we don't need a clear fix because we are doing a center, lost center, which does a clear fix for us. You can actually see that right here. This is our compiled code down here. All right, so let's take a look at what happens when we do that. Perfect, everything lays out just great. Now. Let's say we need to take advantage of cycle and because we have multiple rows of content. Let's take a look at what that would look like. And all we have to do is just copy this and paste. And things are not looking quite right. And that's because the way we're able to get away with not using cycle is there is last child being in play. And last child basically takes that left 
uh, element and plops it there on the left. We don't have that now. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set the cycle in this case to be three because there's three on each row. Set that to be three. And there we go. And that's how you use cycle. So it's a bit interesting, a bit confusing. It's best just to start playing with it and see what it does. Um, it's actually really simple in what it's trying to do, but it can lead to some unexpected things, which usually just causes users to be afraid of it. So don't be afraid of it. So it's, it's just a really, really simple thing that you might just have to play with here and there. So that is unpacking the cycle. Hopefully this helped. If it didn't, leave me some comments below, maybe thumbs down the video so I can, I can learn and make them better. Um, if not, maybe thumb up the video so I know that you guys are liking it. Um, also, just I'm just going to encourage feedback in all areas. Create issues if you find bugs or think that things can be done differently within the Lost Grid API. Um, this is basically a community effort. Um, I've got a full-time job. I'm using Lost Grid at, you know, in different projects, but I'm also using other things. And so I'm constantly learning and getting all this input from all these other sources. And you, the community that are using Lost Grid, are the best source to determining what we should actually be doing to improve and enhance the API. So feel free to leave comments below, tweet, create issues, hop on Gitter, find my email on GitHub, get in contact, and just let us know how we can improve this. Also, the source code for this is going to be in the doobly-doo description below, which is what YouTubers call the description, doobly-doo, I guess. I don't know. I'm learning. Anyway, uh, so source code's down there along with the relevant links. Hopefully you enjoyed this, and thanks so much.